This is Tobias from Lowest Creature, and you are listening to The Dan Chan Show. So I'm joined by Tobias and Philip, vocals and bass, some Swedish thrash hardcore metal as Lowest Creature. How are you guys doing tonight in sunny Sweden? Great. Oh, great. But it's, yeah. it's not, not so, so sunny, sunny though. Yeah. No sun? No. Okay. Rain. As, um, has um when does winter fully kick in april or um maybe next week <laughs> oh, really? or yeah. you never know you never it's know like, the magic of know. well that's like with me being from the uk it's like you have four seasons in one day you know that's what it's yeah. like we we come to expect that that's why i moved to spain anyway so you're here to discuss amongst other things your brand new album which supreme which was released on the 27th of October. Now, you've released the singles Under the Night Sky and the title track. How happy are you to finally be getting this out? Yeah, it's been a long a long progress. And uh, uh, yes, it's basically been going on since the pandemic and uh, everything we've done has been like put in the effort to finally release this album. So it's it's really nice when it's finally getting out now. So, it, so it's a, it was written in the pandemic. Did you use that time to think, well, let's get our second album off the ground and use this time to to, to get together? Because I know Sweden didn't have the, the harsh lockdowns like other people. If you're quite close together, did you just use that time just to get creative? Uh, yeah, kind of. Or, yeah, for me at least, I was uh, kind of motivated to start just writing anew. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess uh, to- Toby lived in Gothenburg, and uh, it was uh, and uh, the, we, the other guys, me and the other guys who still live in lived in uh, Örebro. Uh, we tried to get together and write, and then uh, it came like uh, restrictions that we should that uh, people shouldn't like go and rehearse and stuff like that, and. We took like a break and then come back, took a break and so on. You know, it was like you, you didn't know what to expect. Like next day they saw, said something new. Mm. Yeah. Do you think that time, because you had such a long period of time and you, you were battling against when you can get together and not get together, you, feel, you think that created a better environment for you to record and, and write because you knew that you had a lot of time on your hands? Uh, yeah, kind of. I, 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 play a lot of guitar at home and try to write riffs and uh, have ideas and I know uh, Victor, the guitar player he does the same and so we had some ideas all the time and came up with new ideas Mm -hmm. like during this time as well so but yeah it's uh, we're trying to uh, write as a group so it's for us it's kind of important to see each other and uh, uh yeah create together and yeah. uh, that can be sometimes really easy or sometimes it can take weeks or yeah. months before we see each other and uh, do something was it, how long's this? How long's the album been ready for? How long's it been sat in the can, ready to be released to the masses? Uh, we re- we recorded it in uh, September uh, last year, so 2022, and right. uh, then it was the mastering and then the mixing. Uh, but it's like the songs have been ready since like summer last year. A few mm-hmm. a few songs got like a last final touch, like the the day before we left to the studio, and of course we added more stuff when we were in the studio, but it, the songs have been like circulating in the rehearsal room for yeah. at least two years, I think. Is it is it something. frustrating for you guys, you know, the albums, the, the songs are now old to you guys, and yet we haven't even heard them yet. How is it frustrating that, or have you started work on album three while you're waiting for this one to be released? Uh, we were, uh, I mean, I, I think still think they're really fun to play because we haven't played them live yet. I mean, yeah. and we... we We've had a period where we don't rehearse like as intense as we used to. So it's not like every day, like every, every, uh, every week that we do, we see each other. So I think that's going to just start getting more and more. And with that, I'm at least I'm getting more exciting. Um, every week getting closer to the album release. So, of, but of, of course, there's like one or two songs that's like, oh, not this one again, but, uh, <laughs> but mostly I would say I'm excited about all of the stuff. 
So how has the response has been to the singles and, and, and have you seen any advanced reviews of the album before release? I mean, what's, what's the word on the street? What's the vibe? I think people are excited that we are releasing uh, a new album since, I don't know, 2019. Mm. So, and uh, the last, the first album that came out around that time, it, it's people still listening to it and, and, uh, so and uh, we and buy uh, we're doing like a fifth press on vinyl. Yeah. At the, and uh, so I guess people are excited for that we are kind yeah. of back um, doing new music and all the shows and so on. Are you the kind of guys that go looking at the reviews on YouTube or go sniffing for things, or do you just kind of avoid those kind of things? I think it's I a, little some... bit, a little bit of both. We had this hilarious uh, comment on YouTube the other other week where this guy was like, oh, man, this band is great. I hope they get big enough to get on go on a European tour. And I think we've done like 10 tours already. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, sometimes it's funny, but I try to not like uh, put too much weight into it. Uh, yeah. But that's yeah. a new fan, surely. I mean, that's good. I mean, if they're yeah, fans, for that's... sure. You know, they're going to be digging you guys out, which is what what, what you want. Now, this album is certainly darker than your previous f- effort, which we discussed, you know, 2019 Sacrilegious Pain. How do you think you're evolving as a band per record? How have you gone from like 2019 to, you know, 2023? What's happened in that period and how are you evolving through that? I guess we listen to a lot of, we just uh, try to, I think on this album uh, that we try to take more, you know, influences of things we listen to and uh, being inspired of. We did it with the same with the last album as well, but I think at that time we had like that kind of sound and uh, we just tried to develop and, uh, you know, not be afraid of doing something that we haven't done before or yeah. even if it's, it's not like that we do... Uh, all right, it's uh, yeah, oh, I lost myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, and I think, uh, I think we like when you start a band when you're younger and stuff like that, like we have this band for almost 10 years now. Yeah, like when you start, and when you start a band, you're you're a lot of like, yeah, we should l- list, uh, sound like this, and these are the bands that we we like, and we want to start uh, trying to be like or something like that. But then as you go on with your band, you're more and more inspired by like new stuff you find of course but also like how you're evolving as as persons in the band and what have you written before and how can you develop that to the next next step and i think uh that was the part with the with the writing through the pandemic that we had a lot of time that Mm -hmm. we really put thought like more and more thoughts into every songs than i think we have done before yeah we were faster with every song on the last album to get them done and this time we had more time to think about every part of the song or whatever i wonder how that's going to go forward for album three thinking that you know you're not going to have that pandemic period and time again how are you going to handle doing the same again but evolving to the next level but we're not having probably as much time and probably some label pressure you just, next next album is time for a ballad or something so. yeah. <laughs> i hope like uh, i think this yeah we work really long with this album so i <laughs> I would have nothing against if we get like a time schedule on like a half year. Yeah. <laughs> just just to get uh, it done. see each other and just play fast songs. And <laughs> well, t- talking about it, and I like the fact that you said when you say you like to record together in a room. Now, when it comes to writing, what's it like, you know, hearing and creating those total stink face riffs? You know, the buzz must be insane when you hear them between yourself. There must be some kind of like giggling school kids when one of you comes up with like this <laughs> shit fucking hot riff. What's it like? I mean, it must be fun creating your music. Yeah, for sure. When you when like when the when someone usually Philip or Victor comes to the to the rehearsal space and has has a new riff and it just like smacks with everyone together and you get the drums on and everything. That's a yeah, that's a great buzz. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I can feel like uh, sometimes when I write, I have like a total different idea in my head and. It just, I can just, uh, yeah, me or anyone else can play a riff and then you just hear the drums and you, I'm, I try to be open to changes and just see what happens. And yeah. Just, yeah. Cause yeah. that's the fun part too. Cause like if, if someone just shows you a riff on the guitar, like everybody can get like, Oh, it should be this beat or it should be this tempo or whatever. Yeah. But it's, it's always 
open for everyone to to make their input and i think that's what makes the songs great at absolutely the end. yeah absolutely now i think where you know, where did you glean your influences for this album i read somewhere you lean heavily on your local environment you know the cold dark scandinavia you know the atmosphere is this true is this true what else helps get the juices flowing when you're writing I, I think it's true, but it's also uh, like big over the top PR press text we have to do, kind of. No. But it's okay. I, I I I I mean I I really think we are uh, when you live with like eight months of 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 cold and <laughs> usually a lot of darkness too. That's of course influencing what you put into your music. But um, I don't know. Uh, for me, it's been like. I've started reading more and that's, I think that's developed my lyrics yeah. uh, a lot, like reading a lot of more horror themed books and stuff like that. So, so what, I think, are the, what are the lyrical themes running through this album? But, but you know, for example, uh, I mean, it's still basically the same issues I try to handle. Like I'm, I'm, I'm from the punk scene from the start and I, I cannot help but write like a socially issues uh, kind of song, but, it's usually like getting more and more metaphoric uh, from like horror yeah. themes, I guess, mostly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think that's, that's uh, it. And, and a lot of existential crisis and just like self-loathing as well, I guess. Do you, do you, as a lyricist, do you write things and do you, have, do you have to sit with them for a while before you take them to the rest of the band? Or do you think, I don't want to, especially if you're expressing your, your own personal opinions, do you, do you tend to hold things back a little bit or do you tend to just throw it all in the mix? Uh, I think I hold it back more now because the lyrics are metaphorical that you, it's not like the, the straight up words, what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, and usually like the process is usually that we we have the songs for a very long time and we finish all the riffs and all the solos basically and then uh, I, I I finish the lyrics when the songs are pretty much done mm-hmm. uh, which I guess sometimes is annoying because <laughs> right. I've like thought about a part like here's the, here's the the vocals really important in my head but no one else has heard, have heard it yet but um, um, last album I had a, a few more songs but I had to especially Victor helped me out with like getting the the lyrics done um but oh. this time I had all of the lyrics done before the studio but um of course I I, I showed them to everyone before to like get inputs yeah. if they had any and stuff like that so uh-huh. now Tobias I'm not sure this is another PR thing you say like the PR blur but <laughs> Was it true that you once said the band are pure Scandinavian mayhem? And can you elaborate yeah. on that? <laughs> yeah, that's that's. Uh, I said it, and it's uh, basically a, a nod to my favorite band of all time, Anti Semex. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I had the Scandinavian Jawbreaker album and Absolute uh, Country of Absolute Country of Sweden. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, my favorite. You got a shirt with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's just like that's the essence of of the uh, scandinavian hardcore punk for me yeah now let, can we if you don't mind i'd like to talk some history with the band you know let's talk about how you guys formed you know was it about 10 years ago now was it you know tell me how you got to this point how did you decide on the style did you all know each other before did you forge the band by finding each other how did it happen um it started with uh, me victor and julius had a, a punk band that we had together and um uh, then Julius was away for for a few years and then when he got not a few years almost a year (laughs) and when he got back um this other band couldn't really play so we we started jamming together and then um I had made a tour with uh, Douglas who is now our guitarist old band Medea and I was really inspired by uh riffing hardcore metal stuff um from from it looked so fun when they they were playing and I've I've been listening to heavy metal my whole life so I wanted to do that too and uh, me and Julius started the band and we did the show like pretty fast and we just made Philip play with us we made uh, Victor play with us uh, and uh, two other friends and then we just started from there and um, we had an old guitarist that was called Philip uh, who also Philip Henning. Who played with us until 2016, I think, or 2017, 16. Mm-hmm. And then he, so. yeah, he didn't really like, I don't think he really vibed where we were, where we, all of us other guys were going with the band. And um, 
yeah, he he left and Douglas replaced him because Douglas had been with the band from the start. Anyways, like I think he had done two or three tours with us without playing with us before uh, joining the band. So that's how it started. Uh, that's my picture. <laughs> yeah, Philip, what's your opinion? How, how, how did the yeah. how did the thrash come into the punk? How did all that that the genre fluid? How did it all come together? That amazing sound. I, I don't know. I guess it's a, we, there was like a few bands who were around doing that we were really was into and we wanted to do our take up of it. I guess yeah. Yeah, like those bands, like a band from Finland called Forsen, Guilty from Sweden, and yeah, our trip and so on. And we just wanted to do that kind of thing by our own, I guess. And, yeah. And, and uh, people liked it a lot, and we got a lot of shows. I remember mm. in the beginning. Sometimes we played like two shows every weekend or mm-hmm. something. You know? So we just, yeah, went with the hype. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, yeah took... It was an exciting times because uh, I never had that you know experience with a band before. So mm. we wanted to see where where it c- could take us. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And, and I mean, go on, Tobias. Yeah, we were booking a lot of shows ourselves in in Örebro at, at the time too, and we were really like inside of the the Swedish, like mostly hardcore community, but a few metal bands and stuff as well. And we were basically doing this every week, every day, every week. It's like book, booking shows, going to playing shows. It's, we had our own house actually in Örebro where we did all the shows as well, and it was like twenty four seven living this stuff. Um, Amazing. Getting broke as fuck, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always the case. Who came yeah. up with the, who came up with a band name? I did. Yeah, where did where did it come from? Uh, I was on a, on a really low point in my life, and I felt like I was a, a, a low piece of shit. And I was just like, yeah, lowest creature. That's that's it. It's, I think it's cool. It looks great on logos on t-shirts. I love to see it. It's brilliant. Now, what's happening live? You know, what tours, one-offs, festivals? Have you got planned coming up for this album? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we, we have a, a release show next week, uh, 3rd of November. And then we have a few more, like, uh, secondary release shows in Stockholm and in Malmö in Sweden. Mm-hmm. And then we have, uh, we just teamed up with uh, Stronger Bookings uh, from the Netherlands, and they're helping us booking shows in in Europe and in the UK, and I, I, we have some stuff going on there as well for next year, um, but it's nothing released yet, I think. So yeah, yeah, a lots, lots happening, shall we say? Yeah, 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 that's awesome. Now I've not seen you guys that yet, but what can we expect from a Lois Creature show? I'm desperate to see you. What, 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 what can we expect from it? A good show, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think we always, we always give it all when we play. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah where we are if it's like on a festival with a, a bigger crowd or if we're in uh, we played all types of places uh, yeah. through the years with this band and i think we always give it all and i think it's always a great show and uh, i mean we have played for super punk crowds super metal crowds and everything and i i don't think we ever went off the stage feeling like the re- the response was good like we p- feels like we played shit sometimes but i think people had a good time because we always try to give them a good time when we're playing sure Sure. Now you've done some touring now, racked up the miles. I can imagine you guys having some fun road stories. Have you got any anything off the top of your head you can share as a funny story? If you're playing for punk crowds and you're playing for metal crowds, come on, there must be something that's up there as a funny story from the road. There's, there's a lot. Of, I, I can think of one where we played in a, a, a really small town in, in Germany called Schwarzenberg, which was just it was too much chaos through the whole thing to to even go go through it. But one one thing that's so like speaking for that night was when um we got this room that was just like filled with dust and, and dirt and it was not so pleasant to sleep in and a few of us guys uh, decided to sleep out in the van and uh, the drummer Hendrik from Medea was going into the the venue where we were playing in the house and to get something he left like with his uh, drum stuff and there was this guy who's like had peed all over his drum carpet was sniffing glue from a bottle and was just like ah Chaos. <laughs> yeah. What's your what apart from that place? What's your favorite place to play and why? From where you've played so far. Hmm. I mean, uh, to playing uh, off, 
almost every like European tour in like Zurich in and Budapest and uh, is that's always been a good ride. Yeah, where, 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 where yeah. is that? Sorry, Philip, where did you say? Where? Uh, Zurich uh, in Switzerland. Okay, yeah. oh Zurich, yeah, 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 yeah. Budapest yeah. in Hungary. So yeah, cool. Two, two places that always been. Very cost differences. I'm just thinking. Yeah. The beer, I'm thinking of beer costs. Very expensive beer in <laughs> Switzerland. Very cheap in Hungary. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> do you also, have a, so like, Do you have a look what, at what the? You, uh, go on, Tobias. Go on. Sorry. I don't know. It's, it's, it just depends on like what you want. Because Germany is a great country to play because you get well taken care of. You get a good place to sleep. You get good food and stuff. Uh, but they're so spoiled with shows that it, it's not always the wildest shows. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And then like Eastern Europe is maybe it's a, a rougher time to get as good of a payment or something like that but in germany but it's always like the craziest shows it's like the best crowds you can have you so must when awesome. you get when, when when the promoter or the the booking agent sends you the list through of the gigs you must look at it and go oh we're gonna go there we're gonna go there that's cool you know like yeah. there's there's good food there there's good drink there there's a good 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 party there that must be awesome yeah i, I, I try to uh, like take a look at the city uh, yeah yeah, yeah, do some do some tourist on, stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. Sen- that's very sensible, Philip. Well, we have this saying when when Philip is, usually says, yeah, I'm, "I'm going to the forest." Yeah, and then, then we leave for a while. Every city we come to, and then we was like, "Fuck, we're sound checking five minutes first." But he, he always turns up. So, it's... <laughs> where would you like to play that you've never been to? Uh, I want to go to south southern Europe because we haven't done too much in like Spain or or Portugal and and. Uh... We great like crowd, water. great crowds yeah. here. Fantastic crowds. And I would love to go to South America and uh, the States as well because we haven't gone there. But and I think we have a, I think we have a crowd there in both yeah, definitely for sure parts for of sure. the world. So absolutely. Uh, what just incidentally, what do you prefer, studio or stage? Do you prefer the studio life or do you prefer the the, the, the touring and getting your you know your drum carpet pissed on? What do you prefer? <laughs> <laughs> I, I touring. For sure. Yeah. Why? 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 The why is that your favorite element? What? 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 Why? It's just. It's so. I don't know. It's. 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 It's the like combination of having fun every night and just like feeling like shit for eight hours yeah. <laughs> during yeah. the day. And it's just like. But it's. I don't know. In some way, it's also like structure because you always know you have like one or two weeks where you know exactly what you're gonna do every day. It's like we have this route, we're going to drive these hours and then we play the show and then we have to go out this early and next morning and then we go and play. I like that. Um, And to to have that structure and doing the stuff that I I really enjoy, it's a perfect combination for me. I understand. Now, are you close to the scene in Sweden? You know, obviously, and why do you think Sweden throughout the years years has produced such good music? Why Sweden? It's just the place, the European hub of music from everything, from pop to rock to metal to, to death to everything. Why? And are you close to everyone? Is everyone friends? Uh, good welfare. <laughs> yeah. Smart. yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I actually work for one of these organizations that has the... It's like we get funds from the state to create uh, people's education. It's like direct translation. Uh, so I, I, I take care of a few rehearsal spaces in, in our town um, that bands can rent really cheap. That's good. So that's, that's helped by the government. The government help you to, to do your thing. Yeah, but now they're going to cut the cut the funding for the oh. first time in like 40, 50 years or something. So so I've, I've heard they do that in Finland as well. I, I know a band in Finland that had a lot of government help. So yeah, yeah. Is, is it a Scandinavian thing that? I think so. I think it's it comes from the from the like uh, working class movement and the so, sobriety movement and stuff like that. Like all these people movements. Uh, like when the factory workers couldn't read and you needed to be. Uh, educated to to join the union and understand your rights they provided the the education for it and it started yeah. off like that and then the as the social democrats and stuff got into power they tried to implement it wow for everyone as well that's um, very cool very cool yeah it's it's a privilege we have uh, is, it, is, it, is it is it easy for, for obviously if they were taking the funding away but is it easy for bands to um, access that funding or do they have to go through certain channels and things uh, you start like a study circle, it's called. So you contact your, your local, uh, these organizations are everywhere, like on the countryside in the big cities and stuff. Really? Wow. You contact them and, and you say you have a band and you, usually they have a, um, a few spaces that are like up for rent that you can put your own stuff in. And then there's a few like, uh, fully geared studios where you can rent yourself in and to, to borrow the stuff. 
Uh, so cool. you contact them and you have to be a certain amount of people to do it. And then you report your like uh, education hours to the, uh, to this organization. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Now, you know, give me three words that sum the band up the best. I think you might have said it with your, was it pure Scandinavian madness? That's <laughs> three words. But is there anything else, Phil? Anything else can sum up the band? Three words the best. <laughs> Tobias is like, I've got one. I've got one. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> We'll go, we'll go with pure Scandinavian madness, right? Is that what you said? That was right, wasn't it? Big was it? pure oh, Scandinavian mayhem. Mayhem. <laughs> mayhem, that was it. We'll go yeah. with that. We'll go with that. Now, finally, sure. what do, you know? do you have a final message you can direct straight to the fans, new fans that have just found you, the guy who didn't know you'd been on a tour, to the guys that already know who you are? What's the message to them? Yeah, get a record on the 27th and uh, come come see us at a show. Come to a release party and I'll do if you have the possibility or come to Stockholm and Malmö and then catch us in Europe and hopefully the rest of the world next year. Awesome. Tobias, Philip, thank you so much for joining me on the show tonight. Good luck with the album. And I cannot wait to see you at a show in the not too distant future. Thank you. Thank you.